Hi folks, this is Shafiq. Today we are going to implement elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman or shortly ECDH algorithm in Python from scratch to exchange case securely between parties on an insecure channel. But before we begin, please like the video and do not forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest videos. Also, your comments are more than welcome. Thank you for your all support in advance. In ECDH, the both parties, Alice and Bob, will select a large integer as private key. In this example, Alice selects key A as her private key and Bob selects key B as his private key. Thereafter, they are going to calculate their public key with performing calculation private key times base point G. Here, base point G is going to be a public point on our elliptic curve. Then, Alice sends her public key to Bob. Meanwhile, Bob sends his public key to Alice. Thereafter, in Alice's side, Alice is going to calculate Bob's public key times her private key. Meanwhile, Bob is going to calculate Alice's public key times his private key. At the end of the day, the both parties, Alice and Bob, will have the same number as you can see here. Elliptic curves can be in many different forms. The most popular ones are Weierstrass, Coblets, Edwards curves and its variation Twisted Edwards curves. But in this video, we are going to adopt elliptic curves in various transform. You can adopt coblets or Edwards curves in your implementation. Firstly, the equation for elliptic curves in various transform is y square is equal to x to the its third power plus ax plus b. Let's take a note for this equation in our notebook y squared is equal to x to the power of 3 plus a times x plus b. This is going to be our elliptic curve equation. Thereafter, we are going to use addition formulas for Weierstrass curve. This is the addition formula if the points p and q are different points on the curve. Let's implement this addition formula in our Python program. I'm going to create a function at points and this is going to get p and q points and these are going to be tuples. Thereafter, I'm going to extract x and y coordinates of p and q as x1, y1 for point p and x2, y2 for point q. Addition formula becomes different if the both p and q points are same point as you can see here, but the just beta calculation is going to change in both point addition and point doubling. So in this add points function, I'm going to check P and Q points are same or not. If X1 is equal to X2 and Y1 is equal to Y2, thereafter, this is going to be a point doubling. And for doubling a point, beta is going to be here. Beta is going to be three times X1 squared plus A and over two times y1. Otherwise, if p and q are different points, we are going to calculate this beta value. Otherwise, beta is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Once we calculate the beta value, thereafter, we are going to use the same formula for x3 and y3 calculation for both point addition and doubling a point. Here, x3 is going to be beta squared minus x1 minus x2 and y3 is going to be beta times x1 minus x3 minus y1 and this function is going to return x3 y3 tuple those addition formulas for elliptic curves are designed for real numbers. As you can guess, this division is going to be a float number. On the other hand, in elliptic curve cryptography, we are working on finite fields. In other words, all points are going to be integers for some modulos. So I'm going to append here an integer modulo p and I'm going to move those denominators to numerators with its multiplicative inverse value. Here, I'm going to change the sign to multiplication. Thereafter, find the multiplicative inverse of this value for modulo p. Similarly, I'm going to do it for this denominator. 
find at multiplicative inverse value for modulo p and finally in x3 and y3 calculation i'm going to find values for modulo p then let's decide the elliptic curve configuration for our experiment and we are going to use the same elliptic curve with bitcoin protocol which is secp 256 k1 and this blog post you can find the required configuration values we are going to use this curve and a value in our equation is going to be zero and b value is going to be seven as mentioned here also we are going to use the this base point g and it's going to be a public point i'm copying this x and y coordinate values for the base point g g is going to be this is going to be as x coordinate and it's going to be at y coordinate also modulo and order order defines the number of points on our finite field they are mentioned here we are going to use those values directly i'm going to say p for modulo and n for order of the curve we can confirm that this point is going to be on our curve let's create a function this on curve and it's going to get a point p and also modulo p lowercase thereafter i'm going to check this equation y square is equal to x to the power of 3 plus a times x plus b if this is satisfied then this point p is on our curve of course we have to check with both left and right hand sides for modulo p thereafter this calculation might be greater than the our modulo p that's why i'm going to append p as third argument it's going to find the x to the power of 3 for modulo p by the way we haven't assigned the x and y values they're coming from point p let's check our base point is on our curve point g is on the curve and this is true this means that this base point is on our curve moreover we already implemented at points function and let's point base point to base point itself and it's going to be point 2g and let's see what point 2g is we can confirm that this addition point is on the curve here let's call this on curve function and pass x3 y3 tuple and also modulo p and recalculate point 2g and as you can see this doesn't return any error this means that this point 2g is on our curve now i'm going to delete the calculation of point 2g and build a for loop for i in range from 0 to 10 and i'm going to create a temporary point and its initial value is going to be base point itself thereafter in this for loop i'm going to call at points function and at base point to temporary point and this is going to be temporary points new value then uh, i can start this for loop from 2 because i'm going to print here ig is going to be 10 point as you can see this is 2g this is 3g and finally this is going to be 19g let's find 9g this value is on our curve and it's 20g here 20 is going to be my private k and i'm going to find 20g and this point is going to be my public k of course my private k value is going to be a large number that's why calculation of this point is going to be computationally hard at this point we have double and add method and with this algorithm we are able to calculate k times base point g much faster than a one by one calculation as illustrated here and basically this algorithm represents the private k value as binary thereafter it applies doubling always for its all bits but if the current bit is equal to one thereafter we are going to apply base point addition as you can see this bit is equal to one and we append the base point p to current calculation but if the current bit is equal to zero thereafter we are going to skip the adding base point now let's implement double and add method apply double and add method and it's going to get a point g 
this is going to be a top of thruster it's going to get a integer value k and finally let's transfer the modulo here k is going to be integer value and we are going to firstly transform it to binary called binary function and pass k as input this binary function is going to return a string with this pattern always at first two letters are going to be zero and b that's why i'm going to discard at first two letters start from index two to the end thereafter we are going to build a for loop for i in range from one it's going to start from one because the first bit is going to be discarded as you can see there are 10 bits in this representation but in the rows there are nine rows so we are going to discard the first one and go to end of the bits and current bit is going to be i2 i plus one but this should not be comma in this function i'm going to define target point and its initial value is going to be g itself here we are going to apply doubling always that's why i'm going to call at points function and at target point and target point also we are going to have modulo p argument as input and it's going to be the new value of target point moreover if the current bit value is equal to one thereafter i'm going to add the base point g here and after this for loop i'm going to return the target point as a result now let's test this double and add method for some k our base point was g here and let's calculate for example 20 g and our modulo p was p as you can see this is going to be our 20 g value and it's exactly the same value with this line so we don't have to build a for loop and calculate the k times g one by one the good part of this algorithm this double and add method no matter how large the k is we are going to calculate the k times g much faster than the for loop here the light blue represents the double and add method and the dark blue represents the for loop here we designed here so if k value is really large it's going to be hard to calculate it one by one but we are always be able to calculate it with the double and add method easily this is called elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem because suppose that q is the public k value and k is our private k and g is the public base point if you know both k and base point g it's very easy to calculate point q but if you know both point q and point g it's computationally hard to extract k because you have to build a for loop as illustrated here and it's really hard so this is called elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem and elliptic curve cryptography depends on the hardness of this so we implemented point addition formulas and also the blunt add method successfully and we built our elliptic curve so i do not need this for loop anymore and finally in double dot add method we should check the target point is on the curve here i'm going to call is on curve function and pass the target point as input point p whereas our modulo was p lowercase now let's implement k generation in elliptic curve diffie hellman here the bot alice and bob will select their private k k a is going to be the private k of alice and similarly bob is going to select his private k as kv here i'm going to import random model first and private k of alice is going to be random dot get random bits and recommended k size for elliptic curve cryptography is 256 let's see private case of alice and bob these are going to be secret and these are not going to be shared now the bot alice and bob will calculate their public k and public k of alice is going to be we are going to use double and add method here 
base point is going to be g and integer k value is going to be k a for ls let's assign this calculation to q a so q a is going to be the public k of ls similarly we are going to perform same calculation for private k of bob and it's going to be q b the both q a and q b are points on our elliptic curve let's see this this is the x coordinate of alice's public k and this is the y coordinate of her public k let's calculate the public case in the same cell thereafter alice sends her public k to bob so bob is going to know what q a is but he's not going to know what k a is similarly bob will send his public k to alice so alice will know what q b is but she's not going to know what k b is once alice gets the public k of bob she's going to perform the blend it method and here the point is going to be public k of bob thereafter she is going to calculate the her public k times bob's public k and this is going to be shared k for alice thereafter once bob knows the public k of alice which is going to be qa he is going to calculate the, his private k times alice public k this is going to be shared k for bob and now let's see the content of shared case as you can see they are equal to each other this approach is secure against man in the middle attack because in this line bob knows the public k of alice but extracting private k of alice from this public k point and base point g is computationally hard which is called elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem also in this approach as you can see we are using case with 256 bits on the other hand if we would like to use regular Hellman, then we should select much larger case for example the equivalent for 256 bit elliptic curve k is 3072 bits so we have implemented elliptic curve with Hellman or shortly ECDH in Python programming language from scratch in this video thank you all for watching and see you next time